Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. I make videos on career, education, and lifestyle. Today's video is going to be all about things that I really wish I knew before I joined my master's in business analytics. Oftentimes when I have networking calls with students, this is the number one question that they typically ask me. What are things that you wish that you knew before you started? So I hope that this video will give you a glimpse of things that I might have missed, but you definitely won't because you clicked on this video. One of the first things that I always mention is about the career management center or the job center, whatever it's called at schools that you might be considering. So the point that I make is that the career management center is there to guide you, but not hand you a job. Really, a career management center can help you outline the types of roles that you want to look for. They might recommend different people that you talk to, but they're not going to say, hey, here's a job on a platter, take it. That's typically what they won't do, but they'll help facilitate opportunities or they will try to give you the connections to get that job or take you on a self-discovery path so you figure out what you want to do. So the second tip that I want to give that I really wish I knew is that you need to figure out exactly how you want to spend your time. What I mean is that in the beginning when I started, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, the student council might try to recruit you or, or there might be different campus jobs. There will be students figuring out different interest clubs that they want to join or they might start their own club but there's so many people doing so many different things and you might be pulled in so many different directions without even realizing it. And when this happens, it's really important for you to take a step back and figure out what your priority is. Is your priority, and honestly, maybe even your top three priorities. So mine were, I wanted to be a, an admissions ambassador. I thought it'd be really cool to get to interact with new students. And so I wanted to make time to do that. So I prioritized that. I also wanted to focus a lot on my job search journey. And lastly, I wanted to really grow my technical skills. And so I found different Coursera courses or data camp courses that I wanted to do. So I did that instead. And so those were my priorities and I focused on those in no particular order really, but that's what I wanted to do. But you know, if it's really important for you to work out every day, you should do that. I mean, I should have been doing that the whole time, but I've built better habits since, right? You really need to figure out as school is starting where your priorities are because before you know it, that year or two of the program is going to pass by and you're gonna look back and say, where did my time go? What did I do in my free time? So it's really important to figure out exactly what you want to get out of this. The third thing that I really wish I knew looking back is that you are not meant to learn everything. There is just no way that you will learn everything there is to know in the field of analytics in 10 months or a year or two years, however long your program is. It's just not possible. Really, it's not. Sometimes you have to take things at face value and so whenever you learn something you might have to take it for what it is without going extremely, extremely deep into why things might be because chances are it'll be a very, very fast paced program and so you just can't know everything there is to ever learn about the field of analytics. Essentially what a master's in business analytics gives you is a primer to get you set up to a to get a job and then get the necessary experience to learn on that job. So essentially it's to give you that base knowledge that you can really thrive and build on as you continue to grow in your career. All right, the fourth thing that I really <laughs> wish I knew is that it's really important not to isolate yourself. Please, please, please lean on your community. So typically how I handle stress is I will isolate myself and just focus on the problem at hand. 
and that's just what I typically do but it's really 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 not healthy and I found that I was able to navigate the program a lot better when I was relying on my community and that means people that I was taking the courses with or friends from home or students that have already graduated from the program honestly a lot of my stress came from the fact that i didn't necessarily have any work experience and i wanted to get a job after and i was just so stressed about getting a job that i just i mean it was just i was doing everything i can to make that happen but you really 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 need to talk to people that have done this before you and rely on your community. So whenever I would reach out to past students, they would let me know that they faced a very similar situation and here's where they were at the same point that I was in the master's program and really what helped them and when they got their job and you know what they needed to what their journey was as they were navigating through the program and just hearing all these different perspectives was really important because it allowed me to understand that I'm not alone and there's a lot of students that go through very similar things and there's nothing wrong with me, there's nothing wrong with you, there's nothing wrong with any of us. It's just everyone's journey is different but we can rely on each other and work together. Alright, my fifth and honestly most important point is that imposter syndrome is R-E-A-L real. It is extremely real. I doubted myself a lot, um, I've mentioned this in a few videos in my past, but I came from a psychology background and I honestly didn't have a lot of data related experience. So I fed into the imposter syndrome quite frankly. I would look at students that had real life work experience, that had done this a lot longer than I did and compare myself to where they were. But honestly, that's not an apples to apples comparison. There's no reasonable way that I would be at the same level as they were after multiple years of work experience. It just simply was not possible. But I did still deserve to be there. I deserve to learn. I deserve to integrate myself into the community and grow and really dig into that. Because honestly, even those students that I thought you know had it all figured out really didn't right we're all figuring it out together and please don't let imposter syndrome hold you back especially if you're a non-traditional candidate like i was and you're just beginning your data journey i would really really encourage you not to let imposter syndrome take take over because even now almost two years into my career i still feel a lot of imposter syndrome and that's completely normal. I honestly don't think no matter where I go in life that imposter syndrome will leave me behind. I think it's a very normal feeling that we'll have to push through no matter where we are in our life journey. And you know, honestly, I remember feeling that when I started high school, started college, started grad school, started my first job, started this job. I mean, I've always felt imposter syndrome and likely you will too, but Please don't let that hold you back, but definitely expect it. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this gave you a better idea of things that you need to avoid because I made the hard mistakes. <laughs> I hope that this video is helpful as you go through your own journey. As always, please feel free to message me if you think of any questions. I really appreciate you being a part of this community. Please take a second to subscribe. I am going to continue to make videos every Wednesday and it'll be a lot of data, analytics, education related content. So if any of that, and consulting, I'm also a consultant. So if any of that applies to you, please stick around. Uh, I would love to have you be a part of this journey with me.